This man was brave and fierce, alone in the enemy's camp. He is not afraid even if he is outnumbered, because he has an uncanny skill, rebirth. The man was shot in the hand with a tranquilizer gun. Without hesitation, he cuts off his arm and continues to fight. But soon he is shot twice in the body. Then he smiles, raises the gun and shoots himself in the head. He fell to the ground. At the same time his arm grows back, he picks up his gun and continues to fight and kill. This is a new kind of human. They had the power of immortality. They were called subhumans. Two days ago, Jack was in a car accident on the road. Blood was spilled all over the floor. But he got up in full view of everyone. He was instantly recognized as a subhuman. He was the third subhuman ever found in Japan. The Japanese government then took Jack to a laboratory, claiming to protect the subhumans. But in fact, they began a brutal research project. They wanted to unlock the secrets of the subhumans. Since then, Jack has lived a life worse than death. Scientists experimented on him constantly. He was fixed to an operating table. He was dismembered without anesthetic. If he runs out of life, they would simply smash him to death. Then they wait a few moments for Jack to come back to life. They continued their research. And so Jack lived two days in purgatory. He became an experiment that could be reborn indefinitely. Although he could be reborn, he also felt pain. The pain of being dismembered was imprinted in his mind. Luckily, he only had two days of this life. Because here comes Kenny. He was the first subhuman to be found in Japan. He stormed the research lab to save him. After taking care of the guards, Kenny found Jack and told him what he'd been through. He had been subjected to this inhuman torture for over 20 years, from birth as a baby, until he grew into a strong man. He spent every day in pain and rebirth. The government didn't treat the subhuman as a human being. Kenny invited Jack to fight with him and seek revenge. Kenny handed Jack the gun in his hand. He told him to kill the scientists in front of him. Jack couldn't do it. His humanity was still intact. Kenny didn't hesitate to shoot the man in front of him. He said he liked the feeling of killing. Jack told Kenny that he was a killer to save the other two scientists. He shot Kenny. He took the two scientists and ran away. They ran to the stairs. Kenny came after them. He was hit and fell to the ground. Then Kenny's body filled with black smoke and summoned a monster. Kenny looked at Jack with contempt, telling him that it was the ghost's unique ability as a Yakuza. Kenny's ghost rushed at Jack. Just then black smoke came out of Jack's body as well. He summoned his own ghost. The two ghosts fought together. But unfortunately, the newly summoned ghosts were no match for each other and were quickly dispersed. Nevertheless, Jack used the time between the two ghosts to sneak out of the lab. By the time Kenny caught up with him, Jack was gone. The loud noise in the lab had attracted a large number of journalists and that was exactly the effect Kenny wanted. He's not just here to save Jack. He's here to expose the government's ugly face, to expose their dehumanizing atrocities to the public. In front of the press, Kenny pushed the second subhuman he saved and told the public everything. He wanted to gain the sympathy of the people to put pressure on the government. He wanted the government to create a special district for the Asians. The government's brutal treatment of Asians instantly sparked a public outcry. The Japanese government then held a press conference and refused to acknowledge what Kenny had said, claiming that everything was a lie made up by Kenny. Kenny saw this and released a video. To punish the government for lying he decided to destroy the government building. The time was set for 3 p.m. two days later. The appointed time came quickly. A large crowd of journalists had gathered outside the government building. The government was ready to respond. A large number of special police officers are stationed here to keep watch. But no one could have imagined that when the clock struck 3 o'clock it would be like a death knell. A plane crashed into the government building from a distance. A violent explosion. The smoke was so thick that people were killed. After the explosion Kenny rose from the rubble and was reborn. His partners brought him clothes and weapons by drone. But at the same time, the military's best special forces have arrived. They attacked Kenny. Kenny was shot in the head. Soon he was surrounded by special forces. They were shooting at him repeatedly. This was a government program designed specifically for him. They kept shooting at him and didn't give him time to come back to life. But Kenny had been prepared for this. Another subhuman had already been ambushed on the roof of the building. A sniper rifle shattered everything. Specialists have no time for Kenny. Kenny came back to life. A bloody massacre ensues. Shotgun in hand. Each shot takes a life. If he was wounded he wouldn't hesitate to shoot himself and start all over again. Even the most elite special forces are not worthy of mention in front of Kenny. In no time at all he had killed them all. And all this Kenny did live in front of the entire public. 
he renewed his demand to the government. This time he demanded that the Tokyo government hand over the city to him within three days. If not, he would spread a virus that would turn Tokyo into an inferno. Kenny's comments caused a great deal of public panic. The whole of Tokyo was in chaos. People fled the city for their lives. The government was forced to compromise and negotiate with Kenny. They agreed to make a small area a special subdistrict for the Asians. But this was not enough to satisfy Kenny's appetite. Negotiations fail and war is on the horizon. Just before the outbreak of war Jack approached government officials. He put aside his hatred and chose to work with the government to protect the people of Tokyo and prevent this disaster from happening. They have a plan in place. The virus Kenny needs is only available at the research institute. All they had to do was hold the facility to prevent Kenny from getting the virus and there would be no mass casualties. They stood by at the facility. Soon Kenny's subhumans came in from the front. The guards led them to a specific enclosed room as planned. Jack turned on the fan, sending his own ghost particles through the fan into the room. Kenny's men were soon surrounded by darkness. The ghost particles were invisible to the casual observer. They used the opportunity to launch a counterattack. An anesthetic needle was shot into their bodies. They passed out and were tied up. Although the subhumans were eliminated, but Kenny was not found among them. No one knew where Kenny had gone or what he was planning. They had to set up a large police presence at the entrance and wait. No one would have thought. A severed hand allowed Kenny to make an instant transfer. He cut off his own palm long before his partner set off. He told his partner to take it to the institute. And he himself went straight to a lumber mill and threw himself into a shredder and broke it into pieces. Because subhumans are reborn on the largest piece of flesh when they die. And so Kenny was inside the institute in an instant. Kenny quickly took care of everyone. He cut off the director's hand and successfully unlocked the virus. He made his way to the top tarmac and tried to get on a plane to leave. Jack came to kill him. The ghosts of the two fought together. The two hosts were also firing their guns. Jack is no match for Kenny. He was pinned down in the corner. Kenny picks up the virus and throws it. At the last minute, Jack leaps out of the way. His ghost caught him just as he hit the ground. Even so, Jack was badly wounded. He had to put a bullet in his own head. Jack came back to life perfectly. He hid the virus in a box. The two men fought again. The battle was as fierce as it had ever been. They fought like a thousand horses. After all, they could be resurrected indefinitely and no one could do anything about it. But soon the battle was over. Jack sticks a tranquilizer in Kenny's thigh, then released another tranquilizer. His ghost grabbed it from behind, and then his ghost grabbed it from behind and drove it hard into Kenny's back. The two made a perfect match. At the same time Jack's hand was broken and sent flying into the distance. Kenny grabbed the gun and tried to kill himself, but Jack shot the gun off. He finally collapsed and it was all over. Jack looked at Kenny and let out a long breath. But the next moment, Kenny's ghost punched his master in the face. He killed his master. Kenny had managed to come back to life again. Kenny stood behind Jack with his gun, but Jack smiled with relief. He had a plan. A team of special forces came down from the sky. They used electric shocks to control Kenny. Jack used his only arm to stop him from killing himself. The team then sprayed freezing spray and in an instant they were frozen in ice. A single bullet reduced them to a cloud of dust. Jack and Kenny were killed together. There is nothing left, just in case. The troopers used a hoover to collect their dust, but no one saw it. In a hidden corner, a severed hand slowly transformed into a man. That's right, Jack was reborn. The special forces team shot him. He broke through a window and jumped from a building. He's been a new man ever since. There is no more Jack. Well, that's it for today's commentary. What do you think of my commentary? Are there any other movies you'd like to see? Feel free to leave your comments below. See you in the next video.